Hey everyone, it's Amy McKnight from weavesfreestyle.com and I want to welcome you to the inaugural episode of my Daily Weaver podcast. What is this podcast going to be about? Well, I weave pretty much every day. I am usually working on some projects and usually a multiple, um, a multiplicity of projects at any given moment and I'm I weave about six days a week. I take a break and then um, for one day on the weekend and then I go back to it the next day. But I'm really pretty much constantly weaving. And so I do have, I do blog at wefreestyle.com. Um, but I, sometimes I find that I, it's, I'm, I'm trying to, to keep, figure out what I want to blog about. And not just what I want to blog about, but I have so many ideas and it's like I want to do them all at the same time and have a really super high standard when it comes to, you know, what I put on the blog and being able to put the pictures and make sure everything is perfect. And it can take me days to write one blog post. And so I thought about it and I like talking and I love um, sharing and talking face to face with people. That's what I pretty much do all day long in my um, regular job is talk with people and weave. And so I thought, you know, maybe if I just did videos and I could show you some of the things, it will, um, I can do that in between the times when I'm trying to get a blog post ready to po put up. I did put a blog post up on wefreestyle.com we just last week and it was a review of the Becca RH10 loom. And you're gonna be seeing a lot of that loom on this channel. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that a little later on in this episode. But I guess um, the reason why I'm starting this, this podcast, vlog, whatever, is to be able to share with you um, some of the things that I'm working on and um, I guess to foster more of a community in the freestyle weaving world. I know mm -hmm. that there are other um, freestylers out there, but I didn't find so many. Uh, I know that there may be a, a couple of, of of channels that do deal directly with just um, um, freestyle weaving, but I just wanted to add my voice to this part of the weaving world. So anyway, thank you um, for watching me so far. And without further ado, let me show you what I'm working on. So I, I have at the moment, I have four projects that I'm rotating between um, at right now um, and so I'm just going to show you what I'm working on and just tell you a little bit about my plans and what I've done so far and um, where I'm hoping to go with whatever it happens to be. Something sometimes I know a little bit more of where I want to go than other times but you know that's that's the joy of just like kind of playing it by ear you you are working in the moment and each piece is kind of evolving or coming into its own the longer that you work on it. So what it may be at the beginning may not necessarily be what it is at the end, but the the beauty is in the process of getting to wherever it happens to be as opposed to, you know, following a perfect plan. At least that's what it is for me. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen this piece before. Um, this is my fun fringe handspun yarn scarf. And there's a story behind the yarn in this scarf. And um, yeah, so Savvy Like That, um, an Instagrammer Savvy Like That, um, she contacted me some months ago and asked me if I'd be open to using some um, yarn that she had, that she had hand spun. And I'm like, yeah, of course. And so I didn't think anything of it. And then a little while later, I got this big package of yarn in the mail and I was just overwhelmed. It was just like, so I thought it was just so beautiful. And I, I knew that I wanted to make a scarf out of it. I just didn't know exactly when or how, but I knew I wanted to make a scarf out of it. Let me show you the bottom. So when I finally... Um, had some time and I knew what I wanted to go, I decided to make a a, a scarf that kind of showed off the texture and the 
um, the variety of yarns that she sent me. She sent me a whole bunch of different yarns that she had made. She had, I guess she was make, these are some things that she'd made when she first started. And, um, and so they're, they're different, but I just thought they were all beautiful and I thought they would go really pretty together in a scarf. And so for this scarf, I'm using, I, I put finger fringe on the bottom of it and I'll do a video showing you how to make finger fringe. I, I did a little bit of a short video um, as I was making the finger fr fringe on the scarf. Finger fringe, finger fringe, you can say that five times fast. Um, and it's, it's really straightforward, but I will, I want to write a blog post and um, post a video about how to do it because it's really fun and I think it makes the bottom of the scarf look really cool. And so she sent me, um, you know, she sent me a bunch of, of yarn. Still, but I have a limited amount. And so the reason why I started with it really fringy at the bottom, but then as it got higher up, I was realizing that if I kept going with it with so much fringe, um, I was going to run out of yarn. And so what I decided to do is to intersperse the fringy areas with um, plain weave and I think that it's it adds you know some character to it so you have these like clouds or blobs of fringe and you also have the plain weave and it allows you to be able to see how the yarn looks in plain weave but it also I like the character of the loops um, the loopy loops that you get from when you just pull the yarn and then do some rows of plain weave and then you pull the yarn if you'd like, I will do a, a video on how um, how I made these blobs. If, if that's something you'd like, just let me know in the comments below and I definitely will do that. So this is one of the things that I am working on this week. Um, I think it is, I can't remember exactly how long this scarf is. I don't think it's that long. I think it's maybe a yard, a yard and a half. So I don't have a lot to go, but um, yes, this is one of the projects that I'm going to be working on this week and so that's one let's go to the next one next up <clears throat> I posted about this this morning on Instagram and um, this is what I have so far this is a double weave project now <laughs> my pickup sticks in transporting it I lost my a pickup stick and I've got to put this one back but it's no big deal you know, once you get figured out how double weave works, losing a pickup stick isn't that big a deal. So I'm going to put this in later. But that is what this is. This is a double weave project. And what is kind of cool, I think, uh, when I do write up this pattern is, is that it's made from one ball of, um, I, it's Red Heart yarn. I'm not sure which one it is, but it's one ball of yarn. But you get three colors out of that one ball, which is kind of cool. Um, there's a picture of it on my Instagram account. You can see the, the balls, the colors that came out of it. But I am using two heddles because I'm weaving it double width. So this side, it has the fold on it. And then the other side, this is where the two edges are. This is where I spread my warp. So um, this is going to be about 2.5 yards. Or actually, I think it might be just exactly two yards long. When I'm done, it's going to be 20 inches wide. So if I did my math right. Um, yes, I think it should work out so that I will have exactly enough weft yarn. Um, I kind of overshot the amount of weft yarn that I ne needed when I divided um, the math or did the math as to how much warp I need to put on here. But if, it, if I'm a little short or whatever, I will figure something out in the end, but um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing with this. I'm going to be making a double weave piece. And you can see it has three colors going through it. I had tried mixing up the colors and maybe doing one of each of um, two of the colors. But I wasn't, I didn't particularly care for how it came out. You can see it at the bottom. I like how it looks when I do two strands of a solid color in, you know, blocks in solid colors as opposed to doing the mixed up. Color. So I think I'm going to keep going with the solid blocks of color, two strands, and I'm going to be using two strands together when I'm doing plain weave. I may do some clasp weft, and I would be using a strand of each color, which will even out, equal out to being um, 
about two strands over, if that makes sense. I think this is called something. I think this might be called basket weave. I'm not sure, but um, but yeah. So this is one, another piece that I'm working on. When I'm done, I'll probably make it into some article of clothing. So stay tuned for that. But I really enjoy doing double weave. I, I think that it's one of those skills that is really useful um, to know how to do because once you know how to do double weave, you're able to do so much with smaller looms. And as you can tell, I, I like these looms and I'll talk about them a little bit later on. Um, but I like 10 inch looms in, in general. I have owned all of the, I think I have owned all of them. I have owned the Shacked um, Cricut loom. I have the Ashford um, Samplet 10 and this is the Becca RH10. And I love the size of 10 inch looms because they're very portable and you can weave up to 20 inches um, with the portability of a 10 inch loom. So I, I have a, a series of videos that I, I first posted to the channel about how to weave double weave on a shacked um, sample 10, a shacked, haha, totally mixed that up, a shacked um, Cricut loom. And I had, I've shot videos on how to weave double weave on the Ashford sample 10. And I'll be doing some videos on how to weave double weave on um, this loom. So whatever loom you decide to use, um, you're going to be seeing a lot of this loom on this channel, on my Instagram, on the blog. And I'll may talk about that in this, 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 um, episode, but I may talk about it some other time too. But yes, um, it doesn't matter which loom you like to use, you know, they all will work. Um, but I say that no matter what loom you you have, just learn how to use, learn how to weave double weave. It's really not that hard. Once you master it, you really open wide up your design, um, your creative capabilities on what you can do with your loom. And and I think that it's when you know how to weave double weave, I think in some ways you can do more than it it, it makes it makes the rigid hell super special because you can actually make clothing like from like all the parts of it. Like you can weave a weave a sleeve that is a tube and then make an opening for the head and an opening for the torso. And then, I mean, it's really, I guess I have all these things in my mind that I want, I, that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be showing you um, on the channel, but learning to weave double weave isn't, is one of those things that I think that people make it way make, make it more complicated than it really needs to be and it really doesn't have to be. So anyway, I went off on a tangent, but the bottom line is is that I generally have at least one double weave project going at any given time and this is my double weave project for the moment. I don't know if I'm going to finish it this week, but um this is one of the things I'm working on. So that's that. Next up, we have I'll say that for last. So next up we have we have this one. And I adore these colors. I need to get some more more of these lighter, prettier, corally, beachy type colors. But um this is this is this is my this piece is gonna be with me for a while because I think I warped about five yards. So this is a pretty long warp. I I I I had a, I'm, I use a 4.5 warping board and I warped it, um, I think to the max of it. And then I had pulled, there was some distance between the warping peg and the beginning of the warping, warping board. So I think I did the full, um, five yards. So I think there's about five yards of warp on this loom and it's pretty fine. So I'm going to be doing this for a while. This is what I have done. Let me hold it up so you can see. This is what I've done so far. And I'd probably get more done if I worked on it consistently, but seeing that I, you know, start one and work a little bit and start another and work a little bit more, this is what I've gotten done so far. Um, what I love about how this fabric is coming up out is, is that because the yarn is so thin, um, it gives you, you can really play with texture and um, it's almost like having multiple yarns 
if you double and triple or quadruple like you can see in this area right here where I used um, pieces of yarn doubled and tripled to make these thicker areas in the weaving and that really you can it kind of really stands out against the, the thinner areas of the weaving um, I stuffed I put some add-ins in here by just like making bundles of yarn and putting them in I mean you can do so many things with thin yarn so even though I am partial to weaving with thicker yarn when I do weave with thin yarn I find that it gives me um, it's kind of like how when a, a per and this is something coming from someone who can't draw but um, like for someone who like shading like with a with pens or pencils how when you um, you can draw draw finer lines and thicker lines or whatever well when you have a super thin yarn you can go super super thin or you can go you can use it at its weight or you can double or triple it to get different effects and I guess you can do that sometimes when you have a thicker yarn you can pull it apart but sometimes the integrity of the yarn is compromised when you pull it apart too much and so I'm I didn't always enjoy weaving with thin yarn but I'm becoming to enjoy it more as I can see that you can do you can play with it and you can get more um, effects from it because you have the option of doubling it or tripling it or doing different things with it to make it thicker um, to get to get different characteristics in your weaving so anyway this is um, this peachy peachy coral I don't know what this green is called aqua I'm not sure but um but yes so this is what I'm working on and I'll be working on this for a little while but I'll definitely be it'll be popping up on my Instagram this week and let's see last but not least okay so many of you probably are asking what on earth is that loom Amy I've not seen this one before and I will tell you it is the Becca RH10 loom it is um, I think it's been a while for a while but is not commonly known but I'm going to be showing it a lot on this channel um, and in my Instagram and just using it because um, I, I like the loom it's grown on me and one of the reasons why I, I'm, I'm, I am really using this one and want to give this one a lot of play is, is that it's pretty affordable uh, a lot of people you know may want to try rigid head of weaving but the initial cost of just getting a loom may be more than you know they they might want to invest and so this loom is under a hundred dollars it does everything that a normal um, normal <laughs> rigid head of loom can do it just has a little bit of a learning curve and so I figure that if I use it and I can find you know share how I've learned to use it to get the most out of it to get the most enjoyment out of it to be able to make a wide variety of things then it makes it less scary for someone else who wants to get it and if I can help more people get into rigid hell weaving by lowering the barrier to entry at least cost wise down so that you don't feel like okay it's it's I mean I know that even you know this loom um, you know it's it's seventy dollars for the loom and you know with shipping it's it comes up to about eighty some dollars if you with shipping but it's still under a hundred dollars and if you get all the accessories even to to weave like if you could get you could get all the accessories for this loom so you could weave like with different um you know extra heddles and um you know all sorts of things and you're still going to come out cheaper than if you were to get uh, just a regular 10 inch loom and so I think that it just gives a lot of people who may not have the opportunity to be able to or may feel like weaving with like a rigid held loom is just so far beyond what they're going to be able to do because it just costs so much an option to be able to try and um, yeah that's that's the bottom line as to why I am going to be showcasing this loom and using it a lot and, and letting you be able to see that I can make super cool stuff um, on any loom 
And, you know, I, I think that if you can see that it can be done, then you're more willing to try. If you don't think that it can be done, or if you've never seen something done, then it's, it's less likely that you're going to want to try to do it. So that's my goal is to show you, yes, you can do all sorts of cool things and let me show you how to do them and you can do them on this one. Now, if you have um, an Ashford or the Cricut, um, you can do the same things that I'm going to be showing you on this channel. So it's not like you have to have this particular loom in order to do anything I'm going to be showing you. But, you know, I just want to make it so that if anybody wants to try Richard Hill weaving and they just don't have 150 bucks to spend, that they will be able to say, hey, Amy uses the RH10 loom and she makes some pretty cool stuff. Let me get this loom. You know, I can watch her show me how to do it and I can make some cool stuff too until, and I wouldn't even say until, I mean, this is my go-to loom and I'll have to do like either a, a video or either a blog post on why I, I really do like this loom. There's, there's, I'm not going to go down the road now because I get kind of, um, we'd be here for a while, but this is a really cool loom. And I'll be honest with you, when I first tried it out, I didn't like it. And I actually cursed it and I'm like, why in the devil did they make this thing? Um, but I, I, I'm glad I circled back around and I tried it again and I took the time. That's why I'm telling you about this. Okay. So I'm finishing up every time you get one of these looms, it comes with a project already on it and they, they weave a little bit of it for you to start. And then you have to add your own yarn. So they actually have more yarn than this, but I cut it off because I didn't, I don't particularly care for that color. Um, but I added my own yarn and I started weaving. Now, in the blog post, I tell you that the biggest mistake that I made when I first got this loom was that I took this project off, right? So I took the initial project off and I said, you know, I want to I want to weave something more adult. I want to weave something that's more interesting. And so I just I unrolled it. And I, I took it off. I left the heddle in. I just you said I was going to do something later. And I put on a project. I warped up the 10 inch loom and I put it on the, you know, did everything, got it put on the thing. And I started to weave. And it didn't, it didn't come out very well. I was, I was, I was angry. I was irritated. I was just like, what on earth was wrong with the people who, um, who made this? I mean, I was just like, I was mad with myself for getting the loom. It was really unhappy. It was a bad experience. And, um, yeah. However, talk about like, once you see that something's possible, then you're willing to go back and try again. So I called the, I called the manufacturer up because, um, <laughs> I have their bigger loom, it's behind the camera, I'm pointing to it, but you can't see it. I have their bigger loom, which I love, and and, and I have um, something really cool I'm going to tell you about another day, but why, you know, I will always have their bigger loom. Um, but I call them up because I'm like, you know, maybe it's me. And so I just ask them, have they been getting any complaints, you know, or, you know, was there something that I'm not doing right? And then they, he, he said, um... The, the gentleman's name is Jonathan. He was like, yeah, yeah, my wife uses it. And, you know, she makes table runners. And she, he started telling me all the things that, that she made. And she started t he started to tell me, you know, how classes use the thing. And I'm like, either this guy is telling me stuff or it's me. And, you know, I'm like, he has no reason to tell me stuff. You know, he's in business. I mean, they're selling the things, which means that somebody has to be buying them. So it's probably me. So let me go back and figure out what am I doing wrong? So I went and I Googled and I Googled and Googled and I saw people using this loom. And I actually um, went to his wife's Instagram account and I saw that she had made some stuff with this thing. And I'm like, well, if they can do it, then I'm doing something wrong. And um, I'm like, well, if they can do that, I know I can do it, you know? So let me figure out what my issue is instead of blaming the loom. And so I, I took a step back. I put the project back on, on the thing. Um, 
because I think that's what he told me. He's like, you know, that the project that's on there, you just weave that one and you go from there. And I think he said it just kind of in an offhanded way. And I think they had mentioned it in their um, material. But let me just say, say it like this. It is important to weave the first project on this little loom because um, it teaches you how to use the loom. And if I would have just woven the first project, it would have shown me how to use the thing and, and get into the rhythm of how it works and how it functions. And I would have been able to take that knowledge and gone forward to better understand how to weave a wider piece, how to, to do my tensioning, how to get it you know, tweaked in the way that I wanted to so that I'd have a good weaving experience. But just weaving the, the, the little project that comes with it and finishing it up, by the time you weave this whole piece and get all the way up, you will understand how this loom works. You'll understand how much yarn you get when you flip this thing over. I'm going to show you all of this in a different video. Um, but the bottom line is, is that that helped me. So anyway, every time I get a loom, I get, I generally get these things. And so I have, a, I'm making a lot of bands because I hate wasting. And so I'm, I don't want to waste the warp. And this is a weft faced weave. I don't know if you can see it, but it's weft faced. So you can't really see the warp. So it's just, um, it's going to be some type of either a belt or a band or something like that. But I'm just going to finish it up. And then this loom will be free for me to put something else on it. So anyway, um, I'll probably have this done by tomorrow. The pink, I'll be working on for that for a while. I'll finish the, the um, loopy scarf with the fringe sometime this week. And... Um, and then I'll start something else. So anyway, um, that is, that's all I have for you. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my first episode. Feel free to leave comments below. Um, subscribe to this channel. Click the bell so you'll get notifications when I post new videos. Let me know in the comments below what videos you'd like to um, see. Um, if there's a project that I've woven in the recent past that you'd like to hear more about or learn more about, let me know. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video so far. So anyway, hope you have a great day, evening, whatever it is when you are watching this. And I will see you in the next video. All right. Bye.